Uh, obviously not, Danny. <laughs> MySpace is wicked. Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Business Blaze. It's your boy with the Blaze Simon. Danny has written us a script. It's the five strangest celebrity businesses. And as always, because I don't want to get absolutely destroyed in the comments, thank you, Sam, for adding the memes to this video. You official memeologist. And the other day I saw Brian the meme accountant is back. Welcome back, Brian. It's great to have you. The one person who doesn't get paid. But on the plus side, isn't changed the radiator in the basement. If you're wondering what is going on here, if you're new here, well, now might be the time to leave because it's a little bit weird, but this is the five strangest celebrity businesses. It seems that the last few I've recorded, I swear like I've been holding like a literal book. Danny's like, yeah, Simon, you want 5,000 words? <laughs> like, no, but okay. Oh, they say that most people, oh, what I do is I read this, I react to it, uh, and there are memes. They say that most people are born with some kind of incredible talent or gift, which is just waiting to be untapped at some point upon their unfolding journey of life. Yeah, the people who say that are goddamn lying, because look, look, 99, 90%, 99, I don't know. How many people have you met and be like, wow, you have an incredible talent? And I'm sorry to tell you, but it's not waiting to unfold itself in your life. You have to go out there and get it. Soon I'll be launching my Instagram motivational quotes account. By the way, <laughs> I've been thinking like a fun business place might be to absolutely rip. There's so many motivational Instagram accounts that, and they're so shit. I just thought we could do a video reacting to that nonsense. Smash that like button if you agree. Let me know in the comments. We're two lines in, let's carry on. And we have like eight pages. Well, I'm not sure who says that. And it sounds a bit optimistic to me. Yeah, Danny, you're absolutely right. My mate Barry is absolutely bloody useless at everything. He can't change a plug. He can't fry an egg. He can't ride a bike. Who can't ride a bike? Simon, don't discriminate again. I was worried about him for such a long time, but I was so relieved when he finally got elected as a member of parliament serving the upper Rotherham constituency. Danny's from Upper Rotherham, I, or he's from Rotherham, the city that is mostly famous for its child sex gangs, as I found out when I googled it. Still, this makes it all the more impressive when some people turn out to have more than one string in their bow. Yeah, it's like my one string is being reasonably okay at YouTube. If YouTube goes away, I'm f it's just like, oh well, I guess I'm gonna be homeless now. Uh, I'm happy to say that this even applies to the Business Blaze team. Danny, I'm not happy to say that. As well as being able to write scripts that always turn out to be four times longer than Simon asked for. I haven't read this beforehand, I swear to God. I can also play the entire back catalogue of Duran Duran on bagpipes. Danny, if that is true, which I don't know, given your background, it could entirely be. I'm gonna, we're gonna need to, we're gonna need to arrange something here. Let me know. Uh, Sam isn't just a professional memeologist and video editor. He also holds the world record for most hula hoops spun in a minute while being set on fire and chased around a field by an angry goat. <laughs> Look, now I know you're lying and I'm slightly disappointed about not being able to hear Duran Duran played by bagpipes. Although, whoever thought bagpipes were a fucking good idea? Simon, stop being racist against Scottish people! And Simon, dot dot dot, well anyway, moving on. Oh Danny, you just don't know about my secret skills. My wife finds it weird that my thumb can go like all the way. I don't think that's weird. Like it kind of gets to this position and then it, it, it locks. So you got it here, right? And then you just pop it back and it comes out. But I don't think that's unusual. I just think she can't do that. She finds it gross, so I do it all the time. I was really talking about superstar celebrities who have already dazzled us with their talents in the field or f uh, film or music. God, I hope we talk about the Hasselhoff, the Hoff, the Hoffmeister, the Hoffmeistro, uh, or having an Instagram account and then decide to branch out into the world of business. Tell you what, I'm working on a secret project right now with actually uh, a fan of the Business Plays channel who wrote to me with a brilliant idea. I'm very excited to announce this, but I haven't yet because, you know, I want to just make sure everything's in a row because otherwise everyone's going to be wildly disappointed. But stay tuned. It's not a pyramid. It might be a... Is it a pyramid scheme? I need to check and make sure it's not a pyramid scheme. Admittedly, this is often more to do with the fact that they have a lot of money to invest and burn rather than any true entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah, that... <laughs> I don't know, I feel like I've got a bit of entrepreneurial spirit because I'm not like a traditional media person. Like, I run a business essentially making videos. Like, it's my own little media company. Although everyone's like, Simon just hosts the video. And it's like, no, I don't. <laughs> it's like, I host the videos, but I, I also do like... Other than, I mean, on this, I don't write, I don't edit, but I run the channel, I decide the topics, I pay Danny 
you know, when I feel like it. But I don't know what he does with his money because he's just locked in the basement all the time, which is weird. Um, after all, there are only so many mansions and fancy cars and swimming pools and Simon Whistler stickers you can buy. Oh God, the stickers were like $5. I think they still are. Don't buy the stickers, they're way too expensive. Oh, I totally forgot. I actually purchased the web domain, Perch the Merch, P U R C H, the Merch, dot co. I didn't get the dot com, which was cheaper because dot co is, of course, the Colombian domain extension and cocaine. Someone said I was a racist on Twitter for saying that, and I'm like, no, that's like saying, like, it's racist to say that British people love tea. I'm not so wait, I'm not even saying that. I'm not saying like Colombian people love cocaine, even though I bet you all do because it's cocaine, who doesn't? I'm just saying that your country is associated with cocaine. And how about we focus on the real racism? For example, former professional wrestler and now actor Hulk Hogan once unveiled hidden culinary skills in 1995 when he opened his own pasta mania restaurant in Minneapolis with a menu boasting such delicacies as Hulkaronian cheese, Hulkster burgers, and the intriguingly titled Hulkaroos. You know, I've eaten so many Hulkaroos and Hulkaroos, I kind of feel sorry <laughs> for Big Bubba, brother. I don't even know what that could possibly be. What is an uh, a, a aru? 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 I don't know, is it like kangaroo? Are we eating like kangaroo burgers? That just sounds cheap, but an Australian. That's also, you know, uh, Simon, it's racist that you say that, you know, people eat kangaroo in Australia. Uh, is unacceptable. Hashtag cancel Simon. Uh, actress and activist Susan Sarandon is also pretty good at ping pong and has recently opened up a chain of franchised social ping pong clubs across the US and Canada. I'm glad she went for the social ping pong angle as I can confirm that solo ping pong is the lamest and least rewarding game of all time. I'm gonna sound like a right loser, but I had a ping pong table growing up and I would just play, you know, when no one wanted to play with me, you can flip the other side of the ping pong table up and play against yourself. And uh, God, yeah, like I said, I, I, I started that sentence with, I'm gonna sound like a loser, and I absolutely delivered on that promise. Uh, meanwhile, actress Natalie Portman launched her own line of vegan footwear in 2008, featuring shoes produced entirely from animal-free materials. If I'm not mistaken, uh, we made fun, you know, it's like they just have too much money and they're not very entrepreneurial. I'm fairly sure Natalie Portman is wicked smart. Didn't she go to like Harvard or some sh**? Um, however, sales of the $200 shoes never really took off, with unconfirmed reports suggesting that many consumers found them <laughs> a bit chewy. <laughs> oh, that sounds like an Amazon review, doesn't it? From my Amazon review videos. 75 years later. Here are some of the strangest celebrity side hustles that popped up over the years. Although be warned that this is a Gwyneth Paltrow free zone. And all I can say to that is thank f***ing God. Allegedly. Uh, you can decide whether that's because we can't bring ourselves to talk about Gwyneth Paltrow. Goddamn f***ing right we can't. Or we're so did anyone see that Goop documentary on Netflix? I mean, one time I did that previously in a video and someone was, People complain about the craziest shit. Someone was like, Simon, I'd appreciate if you didn't did that, do that. It reminds me of my friend shooting himself in the head. And I'm like, great, how is that my problem? Forward slash R forward slash am I the asshole? Or we're saving her for a special dedicated business plays episode later on. We're probably not going to, because I don't know how litigious Gwyneth Paltrow is, but you can bet that I'll say some shit in that video that would get me sued, allegedly. Steven Spielberg sinks like a brick. Oh, Steven Spielberg had a business? I mean, like, he's all, he's mad wicked successful, but I hope he sold something like, you know, I don't know, burgers. When Steven Spielberg decided to open it, oh, he f***ing did. Yes! When Steven Spielberg decided to open his own themed restaurant chain in the 1990s, he already had a large body of work under his belt from which he could draw inspiration. When I was a kid, I was like, why are there not more themed restaurants? Why aren't there restaurants like that, you know, uh, themed like Jurassic Park, where it's just like the restaurant from Jurassic Park and, you know, the dinosaurs like around the place and like that? Or, uh, you know, every bar on TV. Like, why isn't there a Central Park coffee shop that is exactly like the Central Park? And then as I got to be an adult, I realized, ah, oh, it's because, you know, quality of the food and comfort matters more <laughs> than the theme. Because that's why that's why children generally a bit sh at business. Uh, for example, he could have served seafood platters or dismembered legs in a Jaws-themed restaurant. Jesus. Or maybe he could have served dino shapes in a Jurassic Park-inspired restaurant. But no. Apparently inspired by his love of undersea exploration, he went with the name Dive and shaped it like a big yellow submarine. Isn't James Cameron the guy? Does Steven Spielberg and James Cameron, are they both legitimately into deep-sea exploration? 
That's actually incredible, if true. The original 300-seat location in California reportedly cost $7 million to build and leaned heavily on the nautical theme, featuring a completely stainless steel interior, bubbling, uh, bubbling porto windows, bar seats in the shape of torpedoes, and even a working periscope that provided panoramic views of Los Angeles, which is always what you see when you're underwater. If you're in that sh movie with, uh, is it Kevin Costner? He's 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 Austra Is Kevin Costner Australian? And he's there's a there's like water everywhere. It's called Waterworld. Uh, also, in that movie, where the f does all the water come from? Like, I'm pretty sure if all the icebergs melted, it's not like there's gonna be no lands left. There's like a massive a massive meteor filled with water crashed into the earth. It's like, well, that sounds like it would just destroy everything. Oh, and he had gills. That's a f weird movie. The menu boasted substantial salads. Oh, like sub. Stanchel, uh, and sub lime desserts. Well, Jesus, Steven Spielberg, I guess this is why you direct action movies and don't write comedies. Am I right? Uh, the, the weirdest thing on the dive restaurant is that about every 45 minutes, the whole structure would simulate a nautical submersion during which the windows would black out, the lights would start to flash, and groaning sirens would blare around the restaurant. That's got to be a little bit disconcerting when the kids are just trying to enjoy a gourmet Spielberger and fries. Oh, I did make burgers. This is glorious. A second branch opened in Las Vegas, and Spielberg originally envisioned opening at least another 60 dive restaurants around the world. For a short while, at least, it became a hip hangout for celebrities and movie stars who were quite possibly just angling for a part in the next Indiana Jones movie. But then <laughs> it'd be like, Brad, why are you here? Brad Pitt. It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I love uh, deep sea exploration, and uh, the Spielberg is delicious. He's like, give me the out of here. Then Profit started to dig a nosedive as traffic slowly began to dry up. It seems the kids found the whole experience a bit frightening, while adults just found it a bit noisy and tiresome. It does sound that way, doesn't it? Within just a few years, both branches have closed their hatches forever. But a bum bum. One diner had commented that there are so many bells and whistles it's like eating in a pinball machine. Another reviewer revealed, this restaurant makes me embarrassed to be a human in the 90s. Justin Timberlake buys old rubbish. I can't say that I've ever closely followed the career of singer and actor Justin Timberlake. I have to say, I saw the movie The Social Network, which is fantastic, and Justin Timberlake plays, uh... The guy who started Napster? I don't remember his name. He plays this guy, and he is amazing. Like, it is... Beautiful. I'm like, this is Justin Timberlake. I had no idea he could actually act. And then I saw another movie with him, with him in it, and I was like, oh no, he's just he can play that one guy really well because in time was. Sh but I thought he was very good in a 2011 movie that I started watching with almost zero expectations on a long haul fight, and it ended up becoming one of my favorite films of the last decade. It's got to be. The so Social Network feels like it was later than 2011. It's called In Time. <laughs> Danny, that movie is so shit. It's such a good concept and it's so poorly executed. Uh, it's set in a futuristic society where people wear life clocks on their arms that are quickly counting down to zero and death. Time effectively becomes the new currency and you have to keep replenishing your life clock to stay alive. It's well worth a watch if you haven't seen it. No, it isn't. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where's my iPad? I'll be right back. Rotten tomatoes in time. Yeah, no, no, Danny. 37% from the critics, but those guys are generally snobs, but the audience gave it 51%. So uh, I guess Danny is, you know, more people liked it than didn't by 1%. <laughs> but the critics thought it was sh Like I say, it was a good idea. Uh, he famously took on the role of Napster founder Sean Parker in the 2010 film The Social Network, which depicted the, big, the rise of the biggest social media platform in the world. And by an extraordinary coincidence, Justin Timberlake spent five years of his real life as the co-owner of the biggest social platform in the world. Kind of. What? He did? Justin Timberlake was the co-owner of the pioneering social media platform MySpace. He must have had, like, a fraction of a percent. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm a co-owner of Amazon because I have, like, a fraction of one stock. <laughs> Uh, anyway, let's see what actually is the truth. Between 2000, which pulled in 100 million users worldwide between 2005 and 2008, and once even briefly surpassed Google as the most visited site in the world. Holy shit. Are you guys familiar as well with the uh, Tom, MySpace's founder, with the most epic Twitter burn of all time, and it is one of my favorite things that exists in the world? Let's just bring it up. Uh, Sam, throw it up here. Uh, the background is, you know, Instagram had some change of uh, terms to their like privacy policy or whatever 
And Tom Anderson, the founder of MySpace, says, People keep asking, so I'll say it. Fear over Instagram's change of terms is ridiculous. Get real, folks. To which some dude called Polo replies, at MySpace Tom, says the guy that was not able to keep a social network alive. And Tom Anderson actually replies to this dude, and he says, at Politapia, says the guy who sold MySpace in 2005 for $580 million while you slave away, hoping for a half day off. And I'm only not laughing as hard as I would be because I've read this so many times and it's just... To me, this is this is one of the most precious things on the internet. And uh, I was talking to a friend of mine about this who is like... Um, at the time, he was working like at a big accountancy firm in London. <laughs> and he was like, the idea of working hard to get a half day off is so on the nose that he's like, it's just beautiful. And Tom Anderson probably doesn't have any idea about the concept of a half day off, never has, but he just knows how to crush this guy's soul. And I think he ended up deleting his Twitter account, but it's like the sickest burn that has ever been laid out. This might sound like the former member of the cheesy boy band NSYNC had managed to pull off quite the impressive business deal here, but that's not quite true because he didn't quite get there in time. But a bum bum tsh. Uh, when Timberlake got his hands on MySpace, the year was 2011, and the platform had been pretty much rendered obsolete by Facebook. A few years earlier, in 2005, Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation had acquired MySpace for $580 million. But the mighty corporate news corporation company had not expected MySpace's star to fade quite so quickly. Murdoch would later label the deal a huge mistake, not for old Tommy Boy, and now he's just a photographer who travels around the world taking photos of places where he is. It's like... Yes! You legend! Which is understandable when you consider that he eventually sold it off to Justin Timberlake and the specific media group for just $35 million. Wow, so he really did buy it. And I mean, in the grand scheme of things, $35 million isn't a lot. Although maybe MySpace is. I sometimes think it would be cool to do a business place where we just. You know, if my, MySpace exists! Uh, it seems like a news website. Oh god, I've got to agree to the European data law things. Hold on. Okay, you have to, every f website now, it's like, hey, welcome to our website, check these boxes and click accept before you can see anything. It just seems to be news. Slipknot's Corey Taylor opens up on new solo album. It's a long time. Fascinating. It seems to be a music news website. Oh, there are people on MySpace. There's a dude who, who, who has a joint in his, in his glasses. I assume that's a joint. But even though it may seem like Justin and his business pals got it cheap, you do wonder what they were shelling out $35 million for when the platform was completely dead and buried. Uh, obviously not, Danny. <laughs> MySpace is wicked. Uh, apparently, it plans to transform the site into a network designed to support musicians, but he ultimately did nothing with it before selling it to Timing for an undisclosed, but very probably even lower sum. One day, I'm gonna use my business media empire, I'm gonna purchase MySpace for $4 and uh, turn it into a meme website. However, Justin Timberlake had scored success in several other lines of big business. He's co-owned restaurants, launched clothing lines, purchased the Big Creek Golf Club in Tennessee, and even partnered with Sawza Liquors to produce his own brand of tequila. And we all know from George Clooney's story that uh, that could work out very well. And doesn't Ryan Reynolds own a gin company with Richard Branson? Which is cool. Like, I think of two people who are extremely cool. <laughs> uh, Ryan Reynolds and Richard Branson. I don't even really drink that, drink that. Uh, I, 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 drink that much gin, but I think I'd buy their gin just because they're very cool people. Let's just hope that no one ever tells him that Friends Reunited is up for sale. Kevin Costner saves the planet. Not every superstar celebrity is obsessed with the idea of raking in millions from restaurants and clothing lines and casinos. Who had a casino? Some of them are keen to launch business ventures that might actually do some good for the world in the long term. Oh, is he talking about Trump? But Trump did casinos before he did celebrity, right? Oscar-winning actor Kevin Costner has enjoyed a mix of glorious cinematic triumphs and damp squibs during his long career. Oh my god, are we actually talking about Waterworld? I see it in bold. In the much-hyped 1995 movie, Waterworld ran horrendously over budget and ended up becoming the most expensive film ever made for that time, though not by design. Uh, I think Waterworld is gonna do reasonably well with the audience, possibly slightly worse with the critics. On Rotten Tomatoes, of course. What do you guys think? I say 76% oh, with the critics, 40% with the audience. Uh, with the... Uh, 77%, 67% with the audience, 40% with the critics. Oh, oh, I was wrong. Well, I was right on the critics, 46%, close enough. 43 from the audience. That is brutal. <laughs> also, you remember when like uh, DVD covers used to look like that? <laughs> it's a bit.
isn't it? It was generally perceived as a massive belly flop, oh hilarious because Waterworld, of a film. <laughs> Sometimes I miss the puns and people are like, Simon, are you dumb? And I'm like, look, look, relax, okay? And yes. Uh, although it's reported that it did eventually become profitable after home video sales and TV broadcasting rights were factored in. But the very same year that he was filming Waterworld, Costner was enjoying more significant underwater success away from the cameras. The actor and director was developing oil water separation machines or centrifuges based on a pattern that he purchased from the US government with a view of helping them clean up any potentially disastrous oil spills of the future. That's a Really? Who is like, who is Kevin Costner like going through governmental patents and buying those and then developing amazing? I mean, weird, but amazing. He would later buy Ocean Therapy Solutions, a company for $24 million, an operation which also saw substantial investment from fellow actor Stephen Baldwin. He's the youngest and least interesting of the Baldwin brothers, or to put it another way, he's the one who's not Alec. Stephen, I don't know, Alec Baldwin, other other Baldwin brothers? Stephen is the brother who lost the plot and went a bit weird and ultimately became a born again Christian. Oh no. <laughs> Anyway, the thing is, nobody really cared about Kevin Costner's underwater adventures until the year 2010, which was of course the year of the BP oil spill Deepwater Horizon. Or as BP preferred to call it, the non-BP oil, non oil spill disaster which happened in the Gulf of Mexico and had nothing to do with BP. Allegedly. They did try to distance itself from, themselves from it. Did we make a video? I've made a video on Geographics, another channel I do, and also I think we talked about it here on Business Place because I remember making fun of this. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. Oh, in the aftermath of the disaster, the government initially used six of Costner's oil water separation machines for testing, after which BP leased 32 of them to play a pivotal role in cleaning up the oil spill. Jesus Christ, how big are these things? I imagine like a centrifuge is a little thing you get in a lab rather than something you dump in the ocean. It's like, yeah, we're gonna separate all the oil out this way. It's like, really? Surely not. So it could be argued, I, I think I'd remember if there were massive centrifuges doing shit in the ocean. So it could be argued that Kevin Costner had a bigger role to play in quite literally clearing up the environment and saving the planet than any other celebrity in history. I'm sure Bill Gates does something, although he's not really a celebrity, he's a businessman. Yeah, maybe. Okay, I'll go for that. There's probably someone gonna be like, uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, someone gave like a billion dollars to whatever. Who cares? That probably makes up for the fact that he was never asked to play Superman, although he did go on to play his human adoptive dad. Fascinating. Costner's cleanup wasn't without a puddle of controversy, though. Stephen Baldwin claims that he had been duped into selling off his shares in Ocean Therapy Solutions for $500,000 just before BP sealed the major deal to lease 32 centrifuges. So, Stephen did. Did he screw over his butt, bruh? Wait. I don't know. Who. I'm so confused. What's Kevin Costner? And who's Stephen? I should really pay attention. Oh, okay, so did Costner screw up? Allegedly, who cares? I don't know. Whatever. Baldwin filed a $3.8 million lawsuit against his former buddy for securities fraud and misrepresentation. Holy shit. Claiming that Costner had effectively hidden the forthcoming deal from him, despite the fact that Costner's company had actually been releasing very public statements at the time. Oh no! Dude, you can't do a lawsuit if the information is like, yeah, no, I just, I guess I didn't read the news. Uh, what was his name? Stephen. It was on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> and then you decided to sell. It's like anti-insider trading. Uh, both actors gave extensive tests testimony in court with Costner claiming that his company had become dysfunctional with Baldwin as a major shareholder and that I never saw him do anything. One of the witnesses testified that Baldwin had threatened to leak personal information to the press about Costner if he wasn't awarded a big payout. Wow. We're not saying that. One of the witnesses said that. Obviously, we don't know that. It's just rumor and not subjugation, allegation. Uh, there's a word for that which I don't know because I'm dumb. The case was rejected by the federal jury and Baldwin and his fellow plaintiff were ordered to pay all costs. Stephen Baldwin wasn't having a particularly good financial period in general. A couple of years later, he was pleading guilty to filing, fi uh, failing to file income taxes and was ordered to pay three, back $300,000. It's like, yeah, you have to pay back $300,000. It was like, yeah, well, it's like you didn't pay it in the beginning. <laughs> Meanwhile, it turns out that Kevin Costner wasn't completely averse to the idea of raking in millions of easy dollars, too. He also ran a casino in Deadwood, South Dakota, for over a couple of decades, although it closed down in 2017 following a general economic decline in the area. Let's just hope he wasn't involved in dishing out the winnings, as maths doesn't seem to be his strong point. We had a great 28-year run, he said with sadness. Oh, sorry. We had a great 28-year run, he said with sadness, as he closed the casino doors for the last time. Close, but it was 26. Oh, Kevster, or Steven, I don't even remember who did this. Let's carry on. It takes a nation of millions to sell fried chicken. 
The name William Jonathan Drayton Jr. may not ring a bell with everyone. Sure doesn't. People are going to admit, Simon, you don't know who uh, William Jonathan Drayton Jr. is? You idiot. He's this really specific person through history, which I thought you would know as someone who seems to be smart on the internet. And it's like we've covered a few things. One, three things, in fact. One, I don't know everyone. Two, I'm not very smart. Three, don't give a fuck. But he's better known as Flavor Fla Flav. Flav? Flavor Flav? I mean, I feel, feel like I'm vaguely familiar with that. I need a girl who can appeal to all my senses. Oh, I like that. A founding member of possibly one of the most influential hip hop groups of all time, Public Enemy, who I have heard of, but I couldn't name a single one of their songs. One of my favorite things about Flavor Flav is that, and I'm not gonna look it up, is that the pronunciation, it might be Flavor Flav. Flav, Flav, Flay? I swear it's Flavor Flay, but then it says Flav. Um, so I think it, or Flav. Flavor Flav. Flav. It's got to be Flav. Flavor Flav is that while other MCs of the era were wearing gold medallions around their necks, he was happy just wearing a huge, heavy, and slightly silly clock. I remember this trend from the 90s. It's like, why are you wearing, like, giant clocks around your necks? Flavor Flav was always a man who knew what time it was. And in 2011, it was time to flog some fried chicken. Bada -bum -bum he teamed up with restaurateur Nick Semino to launch Flav's Fried Chicken in Clinton, Iowa. Uh, but the business relationship went fa bad faster than the time it took to jeep fry a few lumps of poultry. Within the space of just three months, the restaurant had closed, but the pair were even bickering about who had taken the decision to close it. Flavor Flav uh, claimed that he had once paid a visit to the restaurant and found that the potato salad had expired. He once paid a visit to the restaurant. <laughs> well done. He also claims that Semino was mismanaging the place, not paying staff on time, and giving the public enemy star a bad reputation. In turn, Semino claimed that Flavor Flav was largely an absent business partner who wasn't injecting enough cash into the operation, didn't know the first thing about running a restaurant, and was costing the outfit a fortune by making silly demands such as changing oil every hour. Well, what did you expect? You didn't bring him on as a business partner because of his expertise in running restaurants. You brought him on as a business partner because he He's a name that you can associate with the restaurant. It'd be like, I've decided to run my restaurant with David Beckham. And it'd be like, well, I'm not expecting David Beckham to be wicked smart when it comes to restauranteuring. Honestly, I'm not really expecting David Beckham to be wicked smart anyway. However, the following year, Flavor Flav had another cunning business proposal. He was going to open a fried chicken restaurant. We already tried this flavor. This time it was called Flavor Flav's House of Flavor. Hilarious and well done. It was opened in Las Vegas in 2012. I do feel that if anywhere this would work, it would be Las Vegas. Although this one was launched in a blaze of publicity, it closed its doors very quietly less than six months later without any explanation. It was probably a bit shit. But not to worry, because less than a year later, Flavor Flav had another cunning business proposal. He was going to open a fried chicken restaurant. You just can't leave it alone, Flavor! Do people call him Flavor for short, or do they call him whatever his name was, like Cornelius or some shit? Oh, Flavor Flav's chicken and ribs. Oh, f like, I have to say, I'm getting quite hungry right now because that chicken and ribs sounds amazing. When I was a student, I, I lived next to a place that served chicken and ribs and I ate it almost every day. I was very healthy. Uh, it opened in Sterling Heights in Michigan in 2013 with the catchy phrase, chicken you crave, perfected by Flav. Oh, so it is Flav. Okay, that makes sense. Some of the online reviews weren't quite as... <laughs> Chicken you crave, perfected by Flav. Some of the online reviews weren't quite as enthusiastic, though with one critic noting that the ribs were awful, they were dry, tasteless, yucky, and expensive, overpriced garbage. I wouldn't say that weren't quite as enthusiastic, I would say that's absolutely scolding. Although everyone knows there is no burn quite as sick as MySpace Tom's. Business can hardly have been booming.